When someone speaks of the crimes of the Nazism, by default others think of the gruesome death camps like Auschwitz, Majdanek, Buchenwald, the mass shootings and executions of tens and hundreds of thousands of innocent people. But few realize that the worst Nazi regime was in fact not German, but Croatian. After Yugoslavia collapsed under the blows of Hitler's and Italian forces, the independent state of Croatia, NDH, was established on the territory of Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina. The head of the newly created state was Ante Pavelic. It may seem strange, but even the most bloodthirsty Nazis fainted at the horrors of the Ustashas, who were radical Croatian Nazis. The Grim Results of the NDH during the existence of the independent state of Croatia, over 2 million Serbs alone were exterminated. Serbs as well as Jews and Roma in the NDH were initially declared outlaws. Dozens of concentration camps were established on the territory of the state, the worst of which were Jasenovac, Zadovno, Staria Gradishka and Slano. In the latter, more than 10,000 Serbs were exterminated. In Staria Gradishka, 60,000 women and 20,000 children under 12 years old, and in Zadovno, 75,000 people. But the Yasenovac concentration camp stands apart. Since more than 700,000 people were exterminated here, half a million of them were ethnic Serbs and the rest were Jews and Gypsies. But if anyone thinks that the mass extermination of people took place according to the experience of the German Nazis, this person will be surprised to get to know the truth. Nowhere else were there concentration camps where the youngest prisoner of all, if being more precise the prisoner thrown into the camp, was not even two months old. As well as nowhere else were they forced to drink the blood of murdered prisoners and then kill those who drank that blood. In just this camp alone, 1,300 children were gassed alive in one single day. Souvenirs for oneself and others The most horrible was of course the Yasenovac concentration camp, but the experience from there extended to other camps of the independent state of Croatia. What you will hear now is extremely mind-boggling. The Ustashas loved to poke out the eyes of the prisoners who were still alive. They did not just poke them out, but carefully put them in baskets. There is a documented conversation between Ante Pavlic and an Italian interviewer to whom the leader of the NDH showed a basket filled with something that resembled shellless oysters. Are these the oysters? Interviewers question. No. Pavlic replied. These are eyes of Serbs, 20 kilograms, a gift from my faithful Ustashas. The eyes became the material for the beads worn by Ustashas. And not just eyes, some were belts of human skin, to which they attached severe tongues. Apart from gruesome so-called souvenirs for themselves, the Ustashas sent these gifts along the Drina River and to others. Thousands, literally thousands of dismembered male, female and children's heads with notes to Belgrade to King Peter and meat to Belgrade markets were thrown into the water. Serbo Cutters and Serbo Sex The Yasenovac concentration camp was the place where truly many methods of killing people were tried. The most horrific invention was the so-called Serbo Cutters, a specially devised instrument that allowed the throats of as many prisoners as possible to be cut. At the same time, the Serbo Cutter was designed so that the executioner would not be tired for a long time. This killing device looked like leather gauntlet with sickle-shaped blades fixed to it. And there were even competitions among the executioners, the so-called Serbosex, who would slit more throats. There was specifically one man, Petar Bizitsa, who was the unbeatable champion in this kind of activity. During only one night, August 29, 1942, he slit the throats of 1,360 prisoners the so-called champion received from his superiors a gold watch, a little piglet, a lot of wine and silver dishes. Death as salvation But death by Serbocutter can still be considered relatively humane compared to other methods. And not all unfortunate prisoners were lucky enough to lose their lives so quickly. The Ustashas liked to cut off heads at first with axes and sabers, but later they switched to sawing off heads with two-handed saws, 
to torture the victim for as long as possible. Other favorite methods included cutting the skin and putting salt or mud in the wounds so that the prisoner would die long and slowly from infection. The Ustashas burned their genitals with fire or simply tore them out as they also tore out the fingernails of prisoners. In addition to their eyes, prisoners had their fingers and toes, ears, noses and tongues cut off. Sons were forced to rape their sisters and mothers and then the rapists had their genitals cut off and given to their mothers and sisters to eat. Those who were relatively lucky got an awful needle through the heart and those who weren't lucky were suspended by the ribs from a hook and afterwards a long and painful death awaited them. One of the most favorable types of execution was to put a rat on the stomach and cover it with a metal lid. Then the lid was gradually heated until the animal, seeking shelter, chewed through the prisoner's stomach. Prisoners were drowned en masse in the Sava River and in the sewers that flowed into the lake, which was the only heater of water for the prisoners, causing many to die of corpse poisoning and outbreaks of various epidemics. The camp had a so-called death poplar, to which prisoners were stapled with nails. But that's not all. It is a documented fact that one time 160 prisoners were herded into a barracks and locked up for weeks without food or drink. When the barracks was reopened, only a few people remained there, eating their dead fellows. In addition to the serbo cutters, serbo hammers were invented to smash the heads of the prisoners, and the brick kilns were converted into crematoriums in which the dead and the living were burned. In winter, prisoners were stripped naked, doused with water, and locked in a barracks where everyone gradually died of frostbite. During the construction of the Zagreb Belgrade Railroad by prisoners, more than 10,000 people died. When prisoners were exhausted and fell, they were walled up alive in the railroad embankment, which is still called the Embankment of Death today. Son of Satan This nickname was given to Miroslav Filipovich, a crazy, there is no other way to describe him, priest, who demanded that his words kill everyone, especially the children. He loved to find relatives among the new arrivals and make them beat each other to death. The executioner's second hobby was to take son away from his mother and toss him up three times and the fourth time the unfortunate baby landed on the knife. The third favorite pastime of the Yosenovich devil, this was Filipovich's second nickname, was giving the wax putting a sharpened peg in the prisoner's mouth and hitting it hard with the butcher's butt. By the way, when the NDH reported that 68,000 Jews had been sent to Germany and then cancelled the shipment since all had been exterminated on the spot, the Germans did not believe it. They even sent a special commission to the Yosenovac concentration camp to make sure all the Jews of those 68,000 were executed. The son of Satan decided to demonstrate to the guests the principle of the serbo-cutting machine as well. Note that the commission consisted of SS officers, not institute ladies. But during the demonstration on the 12 prisoners, one of the SS executioners fainted from what he saw. At the same time, the commission was shown the breathing graves. This method of killing was not used anywhere else. Prisoners were placed densely in a growth pit and then buried alive. For several days, the earth and the grave would breathe. It was exactly the son of Satan in Staragradishka who supervised the mass exterminations. The son of Satan associates. There were many of them, but the most famous among them are a few. The first was Zvonimir Brikalo. He loved to cut the throats of children, invented and was the first test pilot of the Serbo Hammer. On the first day, when Brikalo was demonstrating the new weapon, a total of about 3,000 people were killed by the Serbo Hammer. More than 500 of them were children. The second is another madman, Dionysius Yurichevich, to whom these words belong. Today it is not a sin to kill anyone if he disturbs our Ustasha regime. I will take a machine gun in my hand and shoot everyone who will oppose the state and the Ustasha authorities. Do your thing. The history of this camp also knows a unique case in which Old Vukashin refused to praise the leader of the NDH. His ears were consecutively cut off, his nose was cut off, his eyes were gouged out, 
and at the end, he said only one phrase to his executioner, Neto Zetsu. Boy, do your thing. The enraged Ustasha man cut out the old man's heart and threw him into a pit, but he himself later wrote in his diary. I couldn't kill anymore. Couldn't kill Petar anymore. Brzitza Petar won the Brzitza bat by slaughtering 1,360 prisoners, and I silently paid and him the forfeit. Since then I have had no then peace. Then had At no night peace. there is no At sleep. Is as no soon as oblivion sets in, oblivion sets in I see the old man's sin. clear gaze again, gaze again, and hear that unbearable, that unbearable boy, do your thing. boy do your thing. I am turned into a lump of terror and pain. I am powerless against this nightmare. Day and night I am haunted by the calm face of Vukashin of Clefts. Subscribe to this channel for more videos and leave a like.